Hello friends, here we are at the end of January and January is often a month that we uh, identify with sort of the depth of, of winter. Uh, we talk about uh, the winter blues, we talk about uh, sad seasonal affective disorders and so I thought that we might reflect on that this, uh, in this message from a Christian point of view. And why I say that is because when we turn in our liturgies to the gospel in, in what is ordinary time, and this year the gospel of Mark, we see Jesus at the beginning of his ministry, and it's marked by two re strong realities, that of teaching and preaching, the kingdom of God has come, but also of healing, of healing people physically, but also healing people, I'm going to say, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We hear of the miracles where someone is oppressed by the spirits and Jesus frees them, frees them to take up again a full, uh, a rich, uh, a normal life. And I was thinking about that. What, what is Jesus doing? So not going into the details of okay, what exactly happened, but rather what is Jesus accomplishing here as a sign of God's love? Well, he's healing the mind. He's consoling the heart. He's freeing the spirit. So just think of that. Healing the mind, consoling the heart, freeing the spirit. That sounds an awful lot like assuring in some person the sound mental health, sound emotional health. And as we believe that we are the body of Christ, that we are to continue the mission of Christ, the work of Christ, being his, his body, his presence and action today, then to reflect upon, well, the church, in addition to prayer, in addition to presence, but what else can the church do to help people in their mental distress, their emotional hurts. Uh, I can speak to what this diocese has done in the last little while in our study days in um, November. Well, we had a, a, a half day dedicated to, and this was for priests and pastoral workers, people from the parishes. What can we do to help people who are approaching death, and the family whose member is approaching death. Uh, all that's around palliative care, about accompanying the person towards a good and holy death, uh, a death filled with peace and, and hope. We also then had a, a day for um, priests and others in terms of when couples are experiencing deep um, distress, difficulties in their marriage, and they come to speak to the priest or a person at the parish, well, how to respond, how to show where help may be had, how to encourage. We've also just recently had a day for, again, priests and, and lay people in pastoral care, in caring for the, those who are distressed, a day on um, how to notice what are the red flags of, of suicide, of suicidal ideation, of how to take up the conversation and reach out so that the person knows that they're not alone as they're struggling with these ideas, with this depression. In the spring, or rather in February, 
And this is with an organization called uh, Compassionate Community Care. The diocese is putting on a, um, if you wish, a training, a formation called Being With, and it's helping people to listen attentively, to listen with compassion, to, to know how to approach in a way that doesn't ever say, oh, you shouldn't feel like that, or you haven't got it that bad, or all of those ways in which we sometimes um, refuse to see the full reality, are rendered so uncomfortable that, that we're not helpful, we're actually sometimes harmful by our words. And so these are, are things that in this diocese we've done. And obviously in many, many of those efforts, when we hear the distress, the suffering of those dying, or those in marriage difficulties, or those in the depth of depression and considering suicide, or in terms of how uh, to be present with people in a way that frees them. So again, all of the ways in which with Christ we do all that we can to heal the mind, to console the heart, to free the spirit, the spirit of life and of joy and peace that God wishes to bring to all of us. Now, it's sure that there are many professional uh, services to which we can refer and, uh, and which we should, people who are trained, people who have the expertise in uh, approaching one situation or another, responding to it. But we also have our part, um, I'm going to say as family, as friends, circles of friends, as community, as parish community. And so the invitation certainly is to for parishes, groups of parishes, um, to gather together and organize this, you know, the sessions that I've been talking to, to turn towards like compassionate communica community care or living works or all those other associations and working with them to help, to empower uh, our parishioners to help those who are in distress. And, but to know always that the greatest aid, I think, to mental well-being is to know that we're never, ever alone. And that's that whole sense where, you know, within family, taking the time to listen to each other, to connect with each other, uh, to put aside our cell phones and, <laughs> and our video games, to, to just be attentive to one another, that life is more than just hockey games and work and running around and all of that, that it's truly about being together as a family, or again in our parish communities, of rising above the level of just acquaintances. Oh yes, that's Mr. and Mrs. Smith. They always sit in that corner. To approaching people, entering into conversations, um, opening the door to friendships, um, perhaps engaging in things like households of faith by which people come to know each other in their faith walk, but also in their walk of life. All the things that can connect us with one another in God's love. And always with that sense that we are continuing the work of Jesus. And we know that in several of his miracles, we hear him touching the person, touching the person's lips, or someone who's uh, le afflicted with leprosy, actually going against all the social mores and touching that person, healing that person. So I invite you to think about that. How can we individuals, families, parishes, in community, truly seek 
to heal minds, to console hearts, and to free the Spirit, God's Holy Spirit in each of us. Thank you.